because I feel like that's they're kind of in sync with what the Holy Spirit just spoke and I'm just going to move straight into the message right now we've started a, a new series on Wednesday night with Brother Joe Green about end times I would invite you to please come and be part of that on our Wednesday night it's a wonderful series and please come and join us but I, I feel like I'm supposed to go straight into the message on the day of Pentecost on the day of Pentecost there was a mighty move of the power of the Holy Spirit and we've been preparing for that move these last several weeks preparing for Pentecost and I'd like to just talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Can we pause for prayer right now? Oh God, we're asking that this would be the living Word of God in our hearts and in our lives. That you would come alive in us through the presence and power of your Holy Spirit and through your living Word. Your Word is alive. Your Word is powerful. And we're asking that your word would come alive in our hearts today and that you would fill us, that you would overpower us, that you would indwell us with the presence of the living God, with the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. That's what we're asking today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 was a momentous moment. They were all together in one mind and in one accord on the day of Pentecost. And suddenly, the sound of a rushing, mighty, violent wind filled all of the house where they were sitting. And fire came down and separated out onto each one of them. Cloven tongues is the way the King James put it. But a tongue of fire rested on each and every one of them that day. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance is the way the King James put it. What that really means is as the Spirit gave them what to speak, they spoke it out, and they spoke out in other tongues. And so this was a powerful event. This was a momentous event because Jesus had promised that when he ascended into heaven that he would then pour out the Holy Spirit. And this was the sign that he had arrived at the right hand of the Father, hallelujah, and that he had sat down there at the right hand of the Father and he had poured out the Holy Spirit just as he promised. And so all of these believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. But it wasn't just them. It wasn't just for them. It was for us too. Peter said at the end of of what they experienced, he, he rose up and he spoke And Acts 2, 38 and 39 says, he said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So we we see that this wasn't just a promise for the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost was the inauguration of a new paradigm, of a new era, the era of the Holy Spirit, where we can all taste and see that the Lord is good, where we can all experience the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, where we can all be filled with the Holy Spirit, where we can all receive the Holy Spirit, where the the Holy Spirit can come down on each and every one of us and we can experience the presence and power of the living God. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive and well, and the proof is the presence and power of His Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So Peter 
told all of them that after they repent and after they're baptized, that they can also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Y'all, excuse me, I'm running dry this morning. So what is the Holy Spirit? How can we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked that question. But it's the wrong question. The real question is who is the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is God himself. Isaiah 61 Verse 1, Ruach Adonai Yahweh Eli. The Spirit of the Lord Yahweh is upon me. And Jesus quoted Isaiah 61, verse 1, in Luke chapter 4, when he stood up in, in the synagogue and he sat down with the scroll and he read Isaiah 61. He said, The Spirit of the Lord Yahweh is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me. So Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is Ruach Adonai Yahweh. Ruach Spirit, Adonai Lord. Yahweh is His name, Yahweh. And so the Spirit of Lord Yahweh is upon me. That means He's a person. He is the Holy Spirit. So we're not just talking about some type of ethereal substance that we can wade out into or something. I I don't know. Some people get kind of weird ideas in their mind or in their brains about what the Holy Spirit is. But the Holy Spirit is God himself. God wants to fill you with himself. God wants to fill you with His presence, His power, His anointing. He wants you to overflow with Him. Amen. Now, God is spirit, according to John 4, 24. And we can't see spirit with the natural eye, with the naked human eye. We can't see spirit. So, the Holy Spirit is, for all intents and purposes, to the natural eye, invisible. You understand? So so we're talking about receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, but it's not something that's visible to the naked eye. We're talking about receiving something, someone who is invisible. And so... In John chapter 1, it says that no man has ever seen God. Why? Because God is spirit, and the human eye can't see spirit. So, well, how, how am I supposed to receive something or someone who's invisible? I don't understand. That's, a, that's a, an odd gift to give. Well, I'll answer that question in just a moment. But he's not just spirit. He's Holy Spirit. He is Holy Spirit. So we have to prepare our temple. Did you know that your body is a temple? For who? For the Holy Spirit. So your temple, your body, has already been created with an empty spot inside. And that empty spot inside is for the habitation, for the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple, but it wasn't designed to just be an empty temple, right? Your body is a temple that is designed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so when holy comes in contact with unholy, something's got to give. Remember, previous weeks we've talked about that. So it's important for us to prepare our temple for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. 
That's why we've talked about repentance. We've talked about confessing our sins. We've talked about cleansing. We've talked about washing. We've talked about being sanctified, being made holy through the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the washing of the water of the Word. And that prepares us, and then we're baptized in water. We go public with our faith, and that prepares us to be inhabited by the Holy Spirit. We, we prepare our temple for the habitation of the Holy But we're not just receiving Holy Spirit. We're receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is a free gift. Acts chapter 8, verses 18 and 19. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Then verse 20 says, Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what TV preachers sometimes say. Did I say that out loud? Uh, you, You can't send in an offering and buy the Holy Spirit. You you and I, some of us have grown up in Pentecost, in the Pentecostal tradition. And and perhaps we've seen a number of various extremities of things that people have done. And I've seen people try to teach other people how to speak in tongues. Repeat after me. That's not God. If all they had to do was repeat after you, that's just flesh. Well, say hallelujah as fast as you can. Repeat it over and over. And then when you stumble on your words, you got it, you got it. I've seen all kinds of foolishness in the name of the Holy Spirit. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. You cannot manipulate the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything in the power of the flesh. Now, you can can cooperate with the Holy Spirit, but you can't come up with the Holy Spirit yourself. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the Holy Spirit. So you can't buy the Holy Spirit. You can't manipulate the Holy Spirit. Well, then how can I receive this invisible free gift of the Holy Spirit? How can I receive God himself? Thank you, Robbie. Come right on up here while you're doing that. I didn't warn Robbie. But how can I receive this invisible free gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, just think about when you were a kid and your mom or dad wanted to surprise you with a gift. And what would they do? They would say, close your eyes. Robbie, close your eyes. They'd say, stick out your hands. And then they would place a gift in your hand. You couldn't see the gift with your natural eye, could you? Because your eye, unless you were cheating. But if your eyes were really closed, you couldn't see the gift. But you could feel the gift. Couldn't you? Now, Robbie, keep your eyes closed. Keep your hands out. Now, I'm going to surprise you with a gift. I'm going to put 
I don't want you to open your eyes, though. You can't cheat. But I'm going to put this gift in your hand. But keep your eyes closed. Even after I put the gift in your hand. Okay, can you feel a gift in your hand? Now close your hand up. Can you keep your eyes closed? Now can you can you kind of tell what that gift is possibly by how you feel? He's wanting to bet. He said he's got five dollars that it's a quarter. Well, I'm not going to bet you because it is a quarter. So now open your eyes and look at the gift. But you knew what it was before you opened your eyes, right? You could tell what it was before you opened your eyes. Now, once you opened your eyes, you could see and confirm the gift, but you knew what it was before you opened your eyes. Now, I want you guys to pay attention because this is just like receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can't see Him. He's invisible. You can't see Him. And when He begins to work inside of you, though, you begin to feel Him. Now, I'm not talking about basing everything on feelings because you can also later open your eyes and examine the gift and see the evidence of the gift. And there's plenty of evidence in the Scriptures that supports the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, That's evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit. There's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's word of wisdom, word of knowledge, all of the gifts of the Spirit that that are evidence that can be seen uh, at work with the natural eye. But before any of those things can happen, you've got to receive the gift, the invisible gift, by faith. You've got to receive the gift by faith, Galatians 3.14, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So just like through faith you put your faith and trust and hope in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you did that by faith, right? You You got saved by exercising your faith in Jesus, right? Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead on the third day, and you shall be saved. So so we all believed, we all had faith and believed that Jesus Christ was our Savior. Well, it's the same thing with receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. By faith, we accept the gift of the Holy Spirit. By faith, we allow the Father to, to put that gift into our hands. By faith, even though our eyes can't see, by faith we accept the gift, free gift in our hands. Hebrews 11.1, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. King James says faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So as the Holy Spirit begins to work inside of you, you begin to feel him at work. You begin to feel him filling you. You begin to feel overwhelmed with his presence. You begin to feel the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And as you begin to receive this free gift, you exercise your faith and you receive that gift By faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to ask Robbie, if he will, just to stay up here for a moment. 
That's yours. That's a free gift. You ever gotten a free gift before? Okay. So you know what to do. You need to either keep it or pass it along. Will you open that for me? I guess the gift wasn't free. I asked you to open something for me afterwards. Okay. So you all remember when you got baptized in water? Does anybody remember being baptized in water? Okay. Okay. Well, Scripture talks about a second baptism, another baptism. Just like you were baptized in water, there's a second baptism. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you in water into repentance. But the one coming after me is stronger than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in Holy Spirit and fire. So you are, he, what John the Baptist is saying, you, you've seen me baptize in water, immerse people into water, but you are getting ready to be immersed in Holy Spirit and fire. Well, it's not literal fire, but a fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, just like on the day of Pentecost. Fire, tongues of fire, came and sat on all of them. So this second baptism that we are being offered in the kingdom of God, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, But wait for the Father's promise which you heard from me, that John indeed baptized in water, but you will be baptized in Holy Spirit. So Jesus told his followers that the baptism was getting ready to happen, and they needed to wait for the power that comes from on high before they go out and try to witness for the Lord. So so we're talking about two baptisms now. We're talking about water baptism and spirit baptism. They're kind of the same, but they're kind of different. When you were baptized in water, you were immersed, or dare I say dunked, Some might say drowned, but if the pastor was doing his job properly, you were immersed in water. Well, there's a different person that's getting ready to baptize you now. That person is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus, instead of baptizing you in water, is desiring to baptize you in spirit, in the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, when you were baptized in water, you had to let go and relinquish control and and put all of your weight in the arms of your pastor or the minister that baptized you. If you were baptized like we baptize here, that involved letting go. And I can't even even begin to, to demonstrate because I don't have that trust factor. I don't see anybody behind me. But you can get the picture of falling backwards, but the pastor had you. You know what I'm saying? He was supposed to have you anyway. So the pastor had you, and you surrendered, you let go, and you went under the water. Well, that's exactly what you need to do right now with Jesus. Surrender your body, your soul, your spirit, your heart, your mind, your tongue. Surrender 
and allow Jesus to immerse you in the presence and power of His Holy Spirit. Now, I know some of you have seen me demonstrate this before. Can you come over here? Help me, Robbie. Uh, So this is a bowl, and in case you can't see it very well, it's got a good bit of water in the bowl. But we're going to pretend that this also represents the second baptism, being baptized by Jesus and immersed in the Holy Spirit. Y'all with me? Ten of you are. Are y'all with me? Okay, so we, we see that this, this is like a literal baptism. There's water here, but there's, we're wanting it to also represent the second baptism, the other baptism, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So when you were baptized, you were immersed in water. Now, this is a sponge, and, and I'm going to not baptize it. I'm going to just set it on top of the water. Now, you would think that that dry, thirsty sponge would soak up that water and go under. But it's not, is it? It's just sitting on top of the water. That's like some of us. We love to taste just a little bit of the Holy Spirit. Oh, we love the goosebumps that we get in a worship service when the Holy Spirit is moving. We love it when someone prophesies over us or gives us a word that we know was from the Lord. But when it comes to us surrendering, when it comes to us yielding, that's okay. As long as I can touch, as long as I can just be around the Holy Spirit, I don't want Him to fill me. I just want Him to be around. Hello? There's some of us that are not willing, really, to surrender so completely that we allow Jesus to immerse us in the presence and power of His Holy Spirit. But like this thirsty sponge, I'm thirsty today for a fresh baptism for a fresh outpouring, for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. I'm not satisfied with just playing church or just going through a ritual or a routine or or procedure. I desire the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God. I want Him to soak and saturate my heart, my life. I want Him to be visible and manifest to, to everyone that comes in contact with me. I don't want them to see me. I want them to see Jesus alive and well in me. I want them to see the fullness of the Holy Spirit at work in me. So what does it take for this sponge to go beyond just touching but to really be baptized? It means the sponge has got to give up control. 
the sponge has got to yield. And the sponge has got to be crushed. Because unless it's crushed, it's not going to soak up the water. So, Robbie, I'm going to ask if you'll just begin to push that sponge down under the water and begin to crush that sponge and and let that sponge start to fill up with water. Go ahead, just keep doing it. Now, you notice that as he does that, as the sponge is baptized, the sponge is also filled. You see that? As the sponge is baptized, the sponge is also filled. And that's what happens with us when we're immersed, hallelujah, in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God. We don't just go under. We're filled with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, I'm going to ask if you'll, if you'll just lift that sponge up. Now, you see that water dripping out of the sponge? That proves that the sponge has not just gone under, that that sponge is now filled with that water. And that's what happens with us. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden stuff starts dripping out of us. When we're overflowed with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, uh, all of a sudden things begin to overflow through us. And if it's in our own tongue, It's praise, and it's prophecy. And if it's in another tongue, where we begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives us what to speak. And so all of a sudden, we're filled. We're we're overflowed with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, And later, there's other things that begin to spill out of us. There's the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. There's the gifts of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. All kinds of gifts begin to flow out through us. But if we just are happy to sit on top of the water, then we'll never experience the fullness of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. But God desires us to be in immersed, to be baptized, to go under, to be filled with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Why? So that we can then overflow onto others, so that we can then begin to overflow to our neighbors, to our our schoolmates, to our our colleagues at work, the folks in our neighborhood. We can then be overflowing with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, praise God. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. So, so we see. That's all right. Go ahead and tell him thanks. So we see that this second baptism, this filling that comes from God, that we have to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit by faith. Remember Robbie had his eyes closed, but he could still feel that gift. We have to receive it by faith. And we receive a person. We're being filled with God himself. And we've got to prepare our hearts because he's holy. So we've got to have clean hearts. We've got to repent and confess our sins and, and, and be washed clean and cleansed and washed and purified and sanctified, made holy by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the washing of the water of the word. But then after we're baptized in water, We can experience a second baptism, praise God. We can experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Are you a thirsty sponge? 
Or are you just content to just sit on top of the water? I am thirsty for more of God. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be what? Will be filled. I desire to be filled with his presence. To be filled with him. Are there any other thirsty sponges in here today? I know this is a little unusual, but I'm going to ask if you're a thirsty sponge and you desire more of God, you desire to be filled with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God. Would you mind just coming down front and and just standing with me down front here, and and let's let's take a few moments before we leave today to encounter the living God. His desire is to fill us. His desire is to immerse us. But we must first be thirsty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12 says, We have all been given one spirit to drink. The presence of the Holy Spirit has been so real in this service. I believe that spiritually, by faith, all we have to do is reach out and receive that free gift of the Holy Spirit. By faith, all we have to do is begin to drink in the presence of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to fill us. All we have to do is just surrender. Surrender to Jesus and allow Jesus to immerse us in the Holy Spirit, to cover us to immerse us in the fire of God hallelujah I believe that there's many many here today who are thirsty for the Holy Spirit So I'm going to ask that we all, right now, begin to praise Him. Because God inhabits, He lives, He dwells in the praises of His people. So so let's begin to praise Him and and begin to build a house that, that is suitable for Him to come and live and come and dwell. So can we just begin to to praise Him right now as as a congregation? Just begin to lift up His name right now. Hallelujah. Father, we bless You. We honor You. We magnify You. We lift You up. We exalt You as King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. You are the creator of the ends of the earth, the seas, and all that is in them. You are Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel. Hallelujah. God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are, hallelujah, the God who raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to ask that you just begin surrendering to Jesus right now. Just just, just surrender whatever needs to be surrendered to Him right now. Just, just act like He's in the baptistry right now with you and he's, he's getting ready to baptize you. But you've got to surrender to His control. You've got to yield and and surrender right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We surrender. We surrender. Oh, 
We're not in control anymore, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way in our life. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and just reach out. (laughs) Just reach out (laughs) and receive. Just reach out and receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus for you to pour out through your Son, Jesus Christ, the presence and power of your Holy Spirit on each and every life that is represented here today. Oh, soak and saturate us. Fill us up with you. Oh, change us and transform us to be more like Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we're hungry. We're thirsty for more of you. In the name of Jesus, right now, we submit and yield to you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, oh, come like a rushing river. In the name of Jesus, come like a mighty rushing wind. Come like the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. In the name of Jesus, oh, let your glory come and fill this place. Let your glory come and fill our hearts. Let your glory come and fill our temples, our temples, our bodies, our temples for your Holy Spirit. Fill up our temple. Fill up our temple with you. Oh, fill us up with you. Remove every hindrance. Remove every barrier. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Satan the Lord rebuke you. Be gone from God's people. In the name of Jesus, Father, loose the anointing of your Holy Spirit to soak and saturate us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now just begin to speak whatever the Holy Spirit gives you to speak out. It may be in your own tongue. You may speak praise. You may speak prophecy. In the name of Jesus, just speak out whatever the Holy Spirit's given you to speak out right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we don't want to just hear about the day of Pentecost in the past. Oh, God, our heart's cry, our heart's desire is to live in the day of Pentecost right now. Our heart's desire is that our sons and daughters would prophesy, that our old men would dream dreams, that our young men would see visions, and our maidservants and men servants, that you would pour out your spirit upon us and that we would prophesy and praise you. Hallelujah with everything that is within us. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 going to ask us if we can form a human chain across this front. Just put your arm on the back or grab a hand or, or whichever way, but, but we're going we're gonna to ask the Holy Spirit to move in us and through us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now just begin praying for that person on your right and that person on your left. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, flow from heart to heart. Flow from hand to hand. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. your people today would you flow through your people today oh let these dead dry bones live again oh let these dead dry bones live again breathe holy spirit breathe on us oh god oh breathe on us breath of god breathe on us hallelujah hallelujah oh let us be rekindled with the fire from above in the name of jesus let us become burning bushes, not consumed, yet burning. Hallelujah. Oh, let us become like a coal on your altar. Oh, let it be so that the fire would burn within us, and yet we're not consumed. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Catch us on fire. Set us on fire with the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Let us become like a raging forest fire right here. Hallelujah. Let us catch the fire in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Holy Spirit, rain down on us. Oh, we're dry. We're parched. We're barren. Oh, but Holy Spirit, you can plow up the fallow ground and begin to rain down your presence upon us. Oh, God, in a mighty and an awesome way. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now let's just lift our hands to him right now. Oh, Lord, we're lifting our hands to you as a sign of surrender. We're lifting our hands to you as a sign of our allegiance. And we're pledging allegiance to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. As you have anointed us, as you have empowered us, we will march forth into this world carrying your gospel, carrying your love, carrying your mercy, carrying your grace. Oh, let us be bearers of the light. Oh, hallelujah. Let us go into the darkest of places bearing the light of God. Oh, let it be so, I pray in Jesus' name. Catch us so on fire with the presence and power of your Holy Spirit that it will light the way for others to see you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, sweet.